Hey again guys, this is another Guild Wars 2 PvP build guide with gameplay. This is again another Ranger build. Our first Ranger build was a bit of a trolley, more fun build. So Ranger's not my strongest class. I'm pretty strong at nearly every class, but with Ranger, I used to play it a long time ago, but I haven't played it recently because I don't like the current meta for Rangers. But the good old Pew Pew power build is still here and strong. So the pets are actually really fun to use now, really strong. So Eagle and Wolf. Wolf is just um, for the massive CC we put out and the decent damage. And Bird is for the massive condition pressure and just pressure that it deals. And the F2 skill has a really low cooldown, which benefits some of our traits. So, onto the traits. As usual, we have for a Pew Pew build, we have a Longbow Greatsword. So, on the Longbow, we run Air Fire. You can run air and where is it? Leeching if you want. But air fire is for the massive burst and since we have such a high crit chance, we will benefit from these sigils quite a lot. You can also Yeah, there's nothing else you can really run apart from air fire and leeching. On the greatsword you can run energy intelligence. We sin we have a high crit chance, but intelligence is really nice for the guaranteed um more to crit so if you want if you don't really worry about that you can switch it out to hydromancy so that chills and deals damage which is really nice you can also it also the chill helps them um the chill slows them down so you can get a maul off easier or a hilt bash then we run pack rune for the massive stats it gives us to our power and precision which is really beneficial for the build and it just gives us those triple boons whenever we're struck every like 20 seconds then maraud amulet for the every pretty much berserker build now because berserker leaves you with basically no health you would just get like three shot with 16k health but with marauder we have a lot more survivability we have 6,000 more health there so these are our stats 2225 power quite high this will go up and our pets also deal quite a lot of damage so our power doesn't need to be too high our toughness is at 2.2k, which is not too bad for a squishy build, since we run Signet of Stone, so that improves toughness for you and your pet. 22k health, not too bad, 60% crit chance, 187% crit damage, that's a bit lacking, but we don't run Berserker Amulet, so there's nothing we can do about that. And yeah, no condition damage, no healing power. We have 30% swiftness duration, however we have no condition duration. There's two kind of routes you can take for your pet. You can make your pet do deadly conditions and a lot of bleeding pressure, or you can make your pet have blindness and yourself have regeneration, but I'll get into that a bit later. So marksmanship, beast mastery, wilderness survival. So if you want to just quickly grab the build, you can kind of screenshot this and that as well. But I'll go through it now. So marksmanship, we have opening strike. So your first strike for you and your pet is it applies five stacks of vulnerability. So that's just a nice little extra percent damage, ten percent more damage there. Then clarion bond is a really good skill, even though it has a long internal cooldown. Whenever you swap pets, because we swap pets quite often with this build actually, you cast a blast finisher and you gain fury, might, and swiftness to you and all your allies. Also from your pack rune you gain fury, might, and swiftness for you and all your allies, so you can kind of maintain a high fury uptime with this build. Then alpha training, pets have opening strike, so I was talking about the opening strike there, your pets also have it. Then moment of clarity, so you can opt for moment of clarity or steady focus, so you can get a 10% damage bonus while your endurance is full. Or you can take a 50% more damage on your next attack, and your stun and daze durations are increased. So we only have access to one stun and daze, which is your Greatsword 5, but it lasts for 3 seconds, which is quite a long time. Great for letting your team set up big bursts, and since your next attack does 50% more damage, you can follow up with more, which will hit quite hard. And yeah, we, oh, that didn't crit. But yeah, so you follow up Hilt Bash, then Maul if you run moment of clarity, if not, and you prefer to stay in longbow and pew pew from far distance away without dodging, you can run steady focus. Opening strike always crits, so your first attack will always crit. You can op Your pets will open with lacerating slash. On your wolf you just make the pet auto attack, but the bird opens with lacerating slash, and you can open with point blank shot for the guaranteed crit, and then follow up with rapid fire. 
Then lead the wind is the all-in-one longbow trait, so your attack speed is increased, your arrows pierce, and they recharge faster. So that just benefits the whole longbow kit very well. The piercing arrows is quite useful for downed pressure. When people are rezzing, you can get both of them at once. When people are stomping, you can try and knock them back and knock someone else back. And just the attack speed increase is basically 10% more damage, and the reduced recharge is nice. On to Beast Mastery. Beast Mastery focus is like a pet focused line which focuses on your pet's F2 skill. And since our F2 skill has such a low cooldown, it's really amazing with this build. So your pet gains 150% um, of every stat and their, their skills are recharged by 20%. And then go for the eyes so your pet's F2 causes blind around it and you gain toughness your pet gains toughness, sorry. So this has no internal cooldown, so you can basically blind people every five seconds with this skill, which makes it really strong, and you can time this for blocking thing, for blinding things like Guardian Hammerbash, Warrior Earthshaker, Mesmer Mirror Blade, Thief, Heartseekers, just hard-hitting skills like that. Loud Whistle, so while your health is above the threshold, your pet deals more damage, and your pet swap gets reduced recharge. Then your pet inflicts weakness on their targets when executing an F2 ability, so this is once again no internal cooldown. This is 4 seconds of weakness with a 5 second cooldown, so this is basically 100% uptime of weakness, or 80% if you want to look at it that way. But it's really high and really great for... Um, it reduces their endurance regeneration, so less dodging means more pew pew. And 50% fumble means that 50% of their attacks have a chance to do 50% damage. So it basically reduces their damage by 25% if you look at it in a mathematical way. And then pets move faster and deal more damage on crits. So your pets have permanent 30% movement speed increase, which is, makes them great for changing, chasing targets and just being sticky on a target. And they, they just crit really hard. Then Beastly Wooden, this is my, one of my favorite traits, I love the name of it, and just the whole trait in general, Beastly Wooden, sounds so cool. Uh, so your taunt, you taunt, so that means a foe gets interrupted and runs toward your pet every, 20, every 15 seconds, and you can immediately follow up with Quickening Zephyr and get a whole rapid fire combo off. I'll show that off here on the medium golem. Let's taunt this guy, follow up with our 7 and 2. And we get massive damage off there, you see. So we applied burning, I mean, we applied bleeding, weakness, blindness, taunt, and did massive damage with rapid fire. And also quite a lot of vulnerability, since rapid fire and our opening strikes give you vulnerability on your target. So use that to either interrupt, you can use it defensively to interrupt people. So if there is a target trying to res someone else, you can stick your pet on the target or the resurrector and then activate their F2 ability, making them get CC'd and interrupted. And then you can, if you're, so since your pet's wolf F2 does fear, it applies the taunt first, so they walk towards your foe for two seconds first and get feared away for two seconds after that. So that leaves them in a long four second CC, which is great for setting up your burst and helping your allies set up their burst. Onto Wilderness Survival, we run increased endurance regen by 20%. This used to be a lot higher, I think. It used to be 50, maybe? I don't know. But it's just uh, your dodges are more frequent. They come up a bit faster than everyone else's. It's a bit hard to tell there, but it helps. Then, the thing I was talking about with your pets doing high condition pressure, you can change to Companion's Might, so critical hits from your pet cause their targets to bleed. Your pet will crit quite often and a lot, and your bird's F2 ability causes bleed anyway, so you'll have per Since this skill is every 5 seconds and the bleed lasts 15 seconds, you'll have permanent 6 stacks of bleeding from this. And then this is 6 seconds of bleed, so you'll have about 2 or two or three stacks from that, so that's permanent eight bleed on your target. And then there's another one here. So your pets deal extra condition damage and have their condition durations increased, so all of these bleeds will last longer and do more damage. But it's easier to go f to take go for the eyes and oak heart salve, so gain a regeneration when you suffer from those damaging conditions and you take reduce recharge while you have rege reduced damage while you have regeneration. Then Companion's Defense, you and your pet gain protection when you dodge. Good for dodge, if someone hits you with a big skill after you dodge, it will be 30% reduced damage. It's combat only. 
as well there. So then shared anguish is a really great trait. So any CC in the game gets applied to your pet before you every 60 seconds. So most classes like to open with a CC and then follow up with a burst and their CC won't do anything to you, it will apply to your pet instead and then you can kind of dodge the burst and play around it. Then your pet takes less damage while your health is above the threshold you and your pet, sorry, so your pet takes 50% less damage, that's quite a lot. If you pew pew from afar and send your pet in, your pet will be a lot tankier and you take 33% damage. This is only the first one or two hits. It's only 2,000 health, basically. And then Wilderness Knowledge. So the whole point of this build is power survival. So we run four survival skills. Each one of them applies fury to you and removes conditions and have reduced recharge. So I'll go over the utilities now. Troll Ungent is a great skill. 850 health per second for 10 seconds, 8,500 heal removes two conditions and grants you fury. Quickening Zephyr, a great burst skill can be used offensively and defensively, so if you want to get away you get super speed for six seconds so you move a lot faster. It also gives you fury and quickness so this can be this can be abused to quickly burst down a target with your um, longbow 2. As you see there the target goes down very quickly. Then Lightning Reflexes is kind of more of a defensive skill. You gain Vigor, so you can dodge more often. Fury and Condition Clear removed, of course. It's an Evade and a Stun Break, so if you get hit by massive skills, you're out of position on a point, get ganked by a Thief, for example, you can Lightning Reflexes away and try and defend yourself. Switch to Sword, maybe. And yeah, so then Signet of Stone is your big 6 second invulnerability, where you take no damage and you're still condition um just you can still be cc'd and conditions still damage you but it's really good for surviving a big burst against a mesmer or a thief or an engineer now even and the passive toughness is nice as well then entangle is another survival skill so the fury and condition removal but it's great for on point fights because it immobilizes foes for 5 seconds and you can your whole team can set up massive CC, burst, and AoE pressure. So you can entangle, then a medigard, um, a burn guard can drop purging flames, a warrior can use 100 blades, Earthshaker, for example, and that's really fun to use as well. Um, some simple rotations or some simple tips. So you want to use barrage on a point, it's like a rain of arrows type of skill. So imagine this square over here is the point, you would drop barrage right there and apply massive pressure, make your enemies waste some dodge, and take cripple. Point blank shot can be followed up with rapid fire because your enemy's been knocked down, they can't move, so you can get a, quite a few hits of rapid fire off. Hunter shot, stealth, and pet, your pet gains swiftness, but um, the stealth can be used when stomping a foe. I'll show that off on the thief. And the auto attack for longbow is just massive range pressure on a target. Uh, let's knock him back and burst him down. And yeah, so you can stealth on the foe and then quickly get a stomp. It doesn't last the whole duration, but it's most of it, as you saw there. It's about 80% of the stomp. Uh, on greatsword, so you can either switch to greatsword offensively or defensively. So what I mean by defensively is if a thief jumps on you, you can switch to greatsword, hold counter attack, and it will block and knock back a foe. So I'll show you that here. Let's attack this warrior. You can hold your block and it blocks it and knocks him back. So then you can follow up with more hilt bash for the stun. And then your pet can do its F2. So as you saw there, we, we blinded the warrior's big leap there. So your F2 is really great for blinding and applying weakness and bleeding as well. And you can get a quick stomp off with your longbow 3. Try and longbow 3 in melee range so the stealth lasts longer not last longer but you have more time to stomp them. Uh, Greatsword auto attacks a bit mediocre you have a one second evade on the third one however it's not too great. All you want to do on Greatsword is maul. You can use swoop to move around so it's a big mobility skill great for getting away or getting into fights and hilt bash is a massive CC and your pet's next attack does 50% more damage and you do 50% more damage since we have that trait uh, there, so I'll just show you a quick burst on the Mesmer. Um, 
and he's dead and then the stomp so yeah your quickening zephyr gives you super speed which is really great for getting away it makes you 50% faster instead of 33% which is really nice or maybe it's 100% I'm not quite sure but quickness is also good for stomping people so it guarantees a stomp pretty much this is also a stun break so we have access to two stun breaks there and also entangle is unblockable so you can use it on an en engineer who uses gear shield and a guardian who uses shelter so that's the build I'm gonna get into a game here real quick see you guys in a second Q popped back up again here. That's good. Ranger isn't too bad on any maps. You just have to know positioning and know where to stand and some good positions, which I'll try and show off in the map I get here. But really, just don't run onto a point unless you're like they have like two downed and you can cleave with your great sword. But even then, your longbow will do a better job at cleaving them. And just stay back, pew pew, roam around, help your team, plus one fights. Don't rush to points, it's not strong at 1v1ing unless you're versing very bad players. Oh, this was a great team, holy crap, two Ellie's. Two Ellie's wins games. Hopefully they know how to play, at least. Anyway, but yeah, don't rush onto points, don't 1v1. This isn't a 1v1 style build. You could win certain 1v1s against classes, Thief, probably, uh, Guardian, Necro, maybe, I don't know, but yeah, I wouldn't advise it. You should try and stay back. There's a really great spot. There's quite a few good spots on this map where you can just hang back, like up here, for example, and pew pew your opponents. So one really good one where people can't hit you without going all the way around is up here. And then you jump on top of this. So yeah, people can't really do much about that. No melee classes can anyway. And you can send your pet in, and since you'll be above 90% health, your pet will take 50% reduced damage. So, there's another spot like that up here. You can kind of watch them coming from their spawn and watch mid. Most rangers like to hang up around here, so you can watch mid and home, or mid and far. You can also get up here, but I can't really do it. Yeah, I don't know how to, but I've seen rangers get up there before. And yeah, so you can hang around the edges. Don't rush onto mid, for example, and spam your longbow around. And just try and play to your advantage. Have good positioning. Yeah. Let's get started. That looks like a very tanky DD Ellie. He runs Earth. So DD, if you saw my DD Ellie video, so Earth makes you very tanky. Fire makes you do a lot of damage but they're both similar. No one went home. I probably should have gone home, to be honest. That was probably my bad. Oh, it looks like they're sending... They're sending two to our home. Holy shit. A ranger and a thief. Let's go, let's go. Come on, dude. Okay. Your pet is too far from that target. No, it is not. <laughs> I'm mass doing massive pressure to the thief. It's hilarious. Let's. You can um, do lightning reflexes backwards as well, so you actually move forwards. Uh, let's get our heal off. You want to start your heal a bit earlier because, as I said before, it's not an instant heal, it's a progressive heal. And let's get our CC off here. Let's get a hilt bash. Oh, that ranger just got eaten by CC. That was good. Okay, I'm pretty sure the ranger's down. I'm about to go down myself, though, however. Yeah, the ranger is down. We evaded the thief there. Get juked. Just fool. That, the, that guy just got fooled by me. So the thief was on me. I lightning reflex back. Like I said, it's great for getting away from thieves. And then I knocked him back. So he couldn't jump on me instantly. And then he's dead. How's our team doing at mid? Oh, someone went far. Okay, that was a pretty good fight. Your pet is dead, and but when it gets back to full health, it comes back to life when you're out of combat. Always call targets with this build. It's very important. Don't just focus random people. Help your team get a target down. Pick one. I wasted my pet swap there. My bad. Okay, we're going to CC the warrior here. 
Let's just wait. And let's pew pew him down. We got a nice 6k one there. Uh, let's, let's line of sight the ranger. The ranger's here. I'm gonna entangle him. Pew pew him there. Pop my heal because I'm, I'm, I know I'm gonna go down soon. I know I'm gonna go a bit low soon. And get our ranger. <laughs> See, um, we did our F2 there and a the ranger set up his burst. So yeah, like I said, it helps for setting up your allies' bursts. What's going on up here? We have far, we have mid, we don't have home, however. My map awareness there was a bit lacking. I was gonna rush far. Let's go help plus one this fight. Ah, oh, feedback destroys you, by the way. Don't pew pew while feedback. Let's knock back and the rain and the mesmer is dead. Boom. So that snipe, as soon as he came out of mist, he died. Oh, I misclicked there. Silly me. I kind of moved back to destroy his clones there just to check them out. Because piercing arrows. Let's head over to far now. They keep outsiding us. I don't know if that's the word. Uh, let's get this engineer down. I got mowed. When you get mowed, use the skill 5 and use a dodge. It is very helpful. And the engineer is dead. Let's get the warrior down now. He popped all his all his thingies. I'm going to pop my heal so the warrior, if he jumps on me, I'll take no damage. I'll heal him. And let's get our burst off. Let's try and see. Oh, okay. Bad idea to burst him. He popped Defiant Stance there. Let's get our F2 skill off. Some blindness and weakness and bleeding. Uh, he's going to go down. Always look at your map here so we see that home is under attack. Someone is pinging it. I'm going to head home. There's a Mesma at far. He should be able to handle himself because he's a Mesma. Hopefully we can reach the range. We can reach the guy from here. My pet's dying, no. Okay, the Mesma seems to have left the point. That guy's got it. Also, two people standing on a point doesn't make it go faster. Okay, Engineer runs Rampage Thief on me. Gonna have to CC this thief. Knock him down. Knock him down the cliff. Uh, thieves can't do much against you, unless they're quite good and stealth backstab you. Oh, this Engineer. Uh, Rampage makes people a lot tankier, so don't waste your burst. I didn't. I made a mistake there. Let's get rampage. Let's get um, entangle off. Get our heal up. Thief is dead. He made a big mistake by attacking me. So whenever a thief jumps on you, you can point blank shot, or as I said, switch to great sword and counter attack. This ranger is dead. I can already see it now. Ah, they're at our lord. Shit. I don't think we need to do worry about that right now. Okay, let's get out. When you're out of combat, your pet cooldown has no recharge. Let's get our pet back to us. Line of sight, this guy. I had no dodges there, but otherwise you want to dodge those things. And we got a big burst there of 7k. Let's get an entangle off in a second. Oh, this is bad. We have to pop our signet there because the thief jumped on us. And we got backstabbed. Yeah, so that was a 2v1. Made a bit of a misplay by going for the warrior instead of the thief. And we didn't have enough pressure to get the thief off us and the warrior. And we ate quite a few big skills. Also, retaliation deals quite a bit of pressure to you since you hit quite fast. How's our lord doing? Looks like the Ellie defended the lord, so well done on him. Thief is coming in. Thief is gonna die. I shouldn't really be doing this. Let's get a knockback and pew pew. He's dead. He's, he's here. The thief is here. We saw that because a little tip there. If you cast your pet skill, your pet doesn't... Your pets don't... Um, once you've casted a skill on an invisible player, your pet will still go to the location of where they are. So I, I could figure out where he was in the Shadow Refuge, and I mauled him. 
We triple capped because they went Lord, which was a bad idea. Our Mesmer won far, it looks like. I'm going to head over to mid. There's a Guardian over here, I think. Uh, <laughs> what? That guy runs a spirit weapon. It's a joke. That like build is actually a joke. Okay, let's get some Cripple down, some CC. And hopefully tr get the Guardian down here. Oh, I shouldn't have walked into there. Had to remove a condition or two. Let's get our, our CC off. Knock the warrior back. He's in rampage form, so we want to kind of get away from that. Counter attack, maybe. Just to get a good knock back. And we got the stump. Cool. Let's get a quick and stump. Where does this go? Oh, to their base. Let's kill their lord. So, the lord gives you 150 points, so you can get a quick kill at 350 and win the game. Ooh, that guardian was good. I stood right in the purging flames, though. What, I thought he already dropped it. Fair enough. Seems as though I have died. Maybe not, maybe not. My pet's resing me. Damn. Hopefully they can get the stomp. My pet got interrupted. So they have to see... Okay, we got him. Sweet. I'm going to lightning reflexes back up here to make sure the warrior's not on me. And then pew pew him down. The rest of the way. I'm going to start on this soldier. Let's go straight for the entangle so these guys can't get us. And... Quickening Zephyr. Pew pew. And let's go for all the skills. Stun the Lord. Pop our Signeter Stone. Pop our F2 and GG. Looks like we won. So top player, Skirmisher. Damage dealt. Kills. Healing to allies. Boons applied to allies. Healing to self. Guard Lords killed. So there's a new thing in PvP. Combat. You can check how much damage you dealt. 300k in one game is pretty insane, don't you think? But... Um, the other day I got 700k in one game, which was really amazing, on my Mesma. It was really fun. We just do massive burst and to everyone. So yeah, that was the build. Ranger, Pew Pew, Power Survival. Hope you guys liked it. Check out some of my other builds. Remember to subscribe for more videos like this.